what's up with you? Hey, girly. Oh, my God. Yo. Basically, my boyfriend, right? Yeah. Um, he's super cute, super loving. We actually met a few days ago, and he That's was like, so oh, my God. And his... His... It's so fucking long. And, like, I was wearing these, like, booty shorts, right? And he was like, oh, my God, your ass is so fat. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. That's so, so nice. Oh, my God, I love fucking Lady Gaga. And I was like, oh, my God, me too. Lady Gaga is so cute. Yes, girl, I'm gay. I'm gay. Oh, my God, wait. Wait. You're gay as well, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, my God! I was like, oh, my God, your ass is so your schlonger donger. Like, girl, he would, like, I'm actually gonna text him and saying, like, what is LGBT representation? <laughs> wait, wait, let's do the intro first. No, 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 you can't go with the crew. Yeah, I'm so much truth. Now I'm fucking with you. Before I get into it, I need to discuss something utterly serious. This morning afternoon, I woke up and discovered a brand new announcement people were mad about. Q-Force. When we asked for good rap, this isn't what we meant. No, seriously, what the fuck is Netflix thinking? Y'all must have made Bojack and thought the sky has fallen from the limit. You got gay secret agents with the sickest of stereotypes I've ever seen in my life. Butthole went boop! I'm gonna save my camera. I'm gonna shut up. Go ahead. And his name is Twink. I can't be the only one. All right, no, I'm stopping right now. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I'm done. The fuck? What? My little buckle went through. Bismal. It's horrendous. Josh, what kind of fucking know. representation is this? Here's what LGBT representation should be. <clears throat> LGBT representation in media is something everyone asks for, but I feel like Hollywood and mainstream media outlets don't get exactly what we mean by that. To me, there's a totally different meaning to representation than what is made in popular art. This is not what we want, man. <laughs> when I look for movies or shows including characters of this caliber, maybe a cute romance for example, Moonlight, Love, Simon, Brokeback Mountain, etc., most things are about oppression or making a character being LGBT the main plot point, like they're closeted and hiding who they are. Everyone hates them, everyone leaves them, but in the end they love someone, or not or just someone flaunting their sexuality as the main driving force of the story. This isn't representation. Sure, showing who people are is totally fine, but when it's all you can find, it gets a little tiring. To me, representation and requesting equality is making things normal, making people like everyone else. Something being normalized and equal means it is not the driving force of said piece of media. We want LGBT characters and relationships to be just your everyday thing, so the fact if a superhero is a man who likes men shouldn't be the main reason the movie is made, or a girl in high school discovering her first love as another girl, shunned, bullied, beaten, and bruised because she's a Leg Mooney member. Make it a normal romance. Make it a casual superhero movie. Their romantic or sexual taste doesn't have to be the waving flag in these visuals. Make it casual. Normalization equals casual representation. I don't mean this in a mean way though. Sure, there are people like this that exist, but for the vast majority, fuck no. I read a tweet that said, as a gay person, this Netflix trailer made me want to order Chick-fil-A and I felt that shit. What I'm asking for when I say representation is give me a normal love story. We have two guys, they're let's say my age, right? They're both 17, both students, and they have supportive families who go on a vacation together and know about their kid's relationship. They support it and have a family vacation like that. Then have the movie be about the kids going on this vacation fighting a sea monster, or like, I don't know, performing a heist, or honestly neither. Just make it about their relationship and living this experience together with the normal turmoil, problems, and disagreements that people with a significant other go through. Don't make the plot be the homophobia they deal with. Just have two supportive families with gay sons who are dating that don't even bring it up. Boom. Romance movie about them at the beach, or performing a heist on the beach. Uh, look, both are cool. You get my point though, right? Don't be like, Ugh, the gays, the families disown them. Look, it's a rare occurrence, but just make it totally casual. Make it totally normal, like you would if it were a straight couple. Do you see my problem here? We don't have anything like that. It's always the fact that everyone gives a fuck about that one aspect of the character. Don't paint every minority's picture in black and white. Give it some natural, casual flavor. Sometimes you have good people in your life and you aren't always suffering. Hey, hey, yo, hey, oh, yo. Oh, ooh. Welcome to the Ellen Show, my lesbian assistant. What do you think about LGBT representation? I think LGBT representation is a good thing to have in this generation. And I mean, people love each other. Yes, okay, that's great, my lesbian assistant. Thank you, my lesbian assistant. Thank you for showing up to this show and giving me your thoughts, my lesbian assistant. But, wow. Thank you. <laughs> 
casual relationships in media. Marceline and Bubblegum, Catcher and Adora, Deadpool 2, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, The Loud House. These are five relationships into fiction that are represented with no repercussion that I'm familiar with. It took a bit of stretch to find, yes, but we have it. And even though these are all in fictional worlds with dragons, talking candy, cat girls, superheroes, clay people, and more, that's just the thing. They're never mentioned. Even in a casual, non-fictional world, there could be consistent problems that people go through that isn't that. If in every source of media a character being gay is pointed out, that's just strange. Instead of normalization, that's putting them on a pedestal or making them an outcast. Todd from Bojack Horseman is asexual. He never has a partner or an interaction with another character in a sexual life. And in one episode, he comes out to a few people years just to let the water flow, and later down the line, joins a group of asexuals as a little friend group. That's perfectly fine. He's never beaten, bruised, made at the forefront of his character, or anything of the sort. That's just fine. Him joining a club for people of the same caliber isn't isolating him or putting him on a pedestal. It could just simply be a similarity to finding a group of people you have something in common with. Period. This is fine. I could give more examples, but you, look, you get the point. Rather, a relationship or a single person, no matter what they are, don't have them stick out. And don't be slick and give us a lesbian couple in the background or a one-time appearance. Make them the main characters without mentioning it. Oh my god, you're a woman and you kissed your girlfriend? That's great, but y'all gotta save your child from the evil monster. You have like 30 seconds left. What? Once more, I'm not saying LGBT representation isn't important. We go through things. We have hardships of our own regarding sexuality. You could talk about issues or make a story ah! about it, but it's all we get, specifically in the mainstream and in Hollywood, and it'd be nice to just have them there in a normal story. I want to be represented casually as anyone else, and I could kick some ass or be a CEO too, with my boyfriend or not. An environment in mainstream media brings me to my next point though. One thing that's done about a lot of LGBT media, well, at least it was. Let me talk about Q4 specifically. You're gonna know where I'm going with this. Characters are portrayed with colored hair, makeup, skinny styles. Hell, this dude's name is Twink. My little butthole went boop. Butthole went boop? What the fuck does that mean? Get a doctor. Oh my God, you made me so angry. I'm gonna punch this, I swear to God. No, you're fucking not. Do you have money for that? No. Well, then you're not fucking breaking it. If they like music, they'll listen to Elton John, ABBA, Ariana Grande, or Nicki Minaj. They have every accessory on earth and then so. Specifically with gay men here. These are stereotypes in media that may be historic but still exist, existed, and have yet to be defied. These things may have somewhat died with cringe culture or Tumblr, but obviously not on Netflix. It is okay to bring individuality to fictional characters. People come in every shape or form, and as said in the intro, not everyone is a rainbow spark of light or has dicks plastered on their crop top. Maybe they wear all black. Maybe they're a mime. Maybe they just wear a hoodie with some camo pants. Maybe they like jewelry or they don't. They can like violence, action, black, white, purple, or red. They could play 2K, GTA, or World at War. And don't get me wrong, I love all types of music, but it doesn't always have to be Lady Gaga, Dua Lipa, RuPaul, or Charlie XCX. Maybe he likes Bruno Mars. Maybe he likes Rihanna. Maybe he likes Drake, Metallica, or hell, give him some young thug. What I mean is, no matter a character's preference, it does not affect their personal interests or freedom of expression. It can be dark or blissful, but stereotyping makes people direct their vision toward only colorful and more feminine mannerisms, which is cool. But in my narratives, personally, we can have both. And this also makes me say, being feminine does not equate to what you're attracted to. If a guy paints his nails, likes the color pink and his Doja Cat in their playlist, that does not mean he likes men. Even though I can relate to all of those, shut up he can have the attitude of a pimp named Slickback. It makes no difference. I think that one right there is my most upsetting part. People connecting homosexuality with femininity or with lesbians, equating masculinity to such. Your expression, personality, and way of style does not equate to what you're attracted to. This could go for so much, and a coincidence does not mean everything is right. Mindsets like this is what makes people afraid of being who they are or branching out into something different. People can come in every shape or form, and with correct representation, they could be anybody else in any narrative, not this. Yeah, like that was a little rough even for me. LGBT representation to me is normalization where you don't stick out anymore. It's the same as everything else in a day-to-day -day life, pride or not. It is nothing new and people live how they wish and how they want, like driving a different car. Yeah, something as simple as that, because who you're in love with and how you express yourself in life shouldn't be the end of it all. At the end of the day, we can't change who we are and how we're made. So the least to ask for is to come to terms with yourself and represent the most beautiful art of all in every light. That art being people. So do you understand what I'm talking about now? Do you get it? Relic representation, get it? 
Uh, huh? What? Oh, sorry. I was texting my boyfriend. Um, what did you say? Mm-hmm.